Hello there, and welcome to Havoc Painting. And in this video, we're going to talk about problems that you might have with airbrush priming, whether or not you might want to wash your miniatures. If you've ever had an issue with airbrush primer not sticking to your models, or if you've ever wondered if washing your models actually makes a difference, then this video is probably for you. Now what prompted me to make this video is that I recently made the switch from spray cans to airbrush priming, and I encountered things I had never encountered before. I chose the Vallejo airbrush primer range because I really liked their paint range in general, it's good quality stuff, and it's got good reviews. So I sat down and immediately primed these Stormcast Liberators that I had sitting around for a few years, and I was happy with the results. However, about a week later, I was getting ready to paint them, and I happened to scratch at what appeared to be a mold line on the shoulder pad, and the primer just came right off. I checked a few more miniatures in multiple places, and all of the primer kept scratching off at the lightest touch of my fingernail. Now obviously, this would not do. So after scouring the internet, it turns out that many people have actually had the same problem, and it doesn't appear to be unique to the Vallejo brand. Some people claim the same, is same issues with Steinal Res by Badger. So in the past, I used spray cans, usually some form of Krylon flat spray primer, which adheres so well, it actually won't come off no matter how hard you scratch at it. This old Terminator was primed with Krylon, and I can scratch at it, extremely hard and the primer stays on no matter what. It takes an X-Acto knife with some heavy pressure to get through it. Unfortunately, that's because Krylon actually bonds to the plastic on a molecular level, which can actually be a very bad thing if you ever want to strip the paint off of your miniatures later on. Now to be clear, this is not a formal review of Vallejo's primers, nor a comparison to other spray primers. And the bottom line up front, is that there's actually a really simple fix to this adhesion problem with airbrush primers, and it's not actually the brand of primer that you're using. So some old friends asked me when I inquired to them if they knew what was going on, they asked me, did you wash your miniatures? Did I wash them? Of course not. I would actually love to hear in the comments below if any of you do this already. Here's my hobby confession. In the near 30 years that I've been building and painting miniatures, I have never once washed a miniature before painting. Am I alone in that? Let me know. Then again, I was also using Krylon to spray all my miniatures, so who knows if it would have made a difference. That got me wondering and doing research uh, about washing miniatures online. Uh, so when companies make miniatures in a mold, oftentimes it leaves behind a residue on the plastic uh, what this residue does is it's the lubricant, essentially, that allows the plastic to come out of the mold easily. Think about it like grease on a cookie sheet. Also, when you are assembling the model, the greases and the oils from your hands and the sweat, they get all over the model too. So here's a pro tip, don't eat greasy food with your hands while you're assembling your toys. I decided to do a little bit of an experiment and to see if washing your miniatures actually makes any difference or could improve the primer adhesion at all. I decided not to try Simple Green, a suggestion from the internet, because it's a degreaser and I have found that it leaves a residue on the surface of whatever you put it on, so I figured that that would run counter to what we're trying to accomplish. So, First I have these three blood letters, and I used an old toothbrush with some warm water and a bit of mild dish soap, and I scrubbed and dried the three blood letters. Luckily, all of the basing actually seemed to remain on the miniature, so I didn't have to go back and redo any of that. So the next washing method, I decided to use generic rubbing alcohol for the three blood reavers. The rubbing alcohol I find to be a great hobby tool in general. It's especially effective at stripping paint off of miniatures. You'd think that this might be bad, similar to why we didn't want to use Simple Green, but rubbing alcohol actually dries without any sort of residue, and it also washes off extremely easily. Now for both washing methods, I gave each a rinse in warm water, and then I let it dry overnight before moving on to priming. I chose to do three different miniatures washed with each method because I wanted to make sure it just wasn't a bad batch of primer or to test out that myth I found online that some of various colors actually have different adhesion characteristics. 
So to test against this, I bought two additional colors of Vallejo primer, both gray and white, off of Amazon. And I bought each of them from a different vendor in a different size from a different part of the country. So I figured if there was any sort of batch problem or maybe a color problem, this would help me to tease it out. So as a result, I hope to see if washing your miniatures makes any difference and if how you wash it matters. Finally, if there's any actual differences caused by the batch or the color. And if none of these solutions work, then perhaps we could conclude it is actually an issue with Vallejo primers in general. So for each, I'm only going to do a single coat. I'm not going to get into doing additional coats because for me, I want to be able to do this in a single coat and not obscure any of the detail on the miniature by going heavy. Now one might ask, why even run this experiment? Why not just use that can of Spry uh, Krylon primer that you have sitting in there in the back? Now trust me, I thought about it. But this gets into why I made the decision to switch to an airbrush for priming in general. I think there's a lot of benefits that far outweigh the ease of a spray can. And once you have the setup, the airbrush method actually is a lot more convenient for a number of reasons. Besides, one, it's better for the environment. Two, far less fumes that you have to deal with, especially if you're priming in a small area, maybe in an apartment. There's better coverage with less wasted paint, less overspray, and you preserve the details so much better. I do all my spraying in an apartment, in a small bedroom with all of my neighbors around. Now you might think that's weird, but I managed to get a really quiet compressor, so it works out for me. You can also prime year-round with an airbrush, which you can't do with a spray can. If you've ever tried to prime in you know, extreme heat or cold or high humidity, then you know spray cans ha tend to have issues. Airbrush primer is also really a lot easier to clean off if you ever want to strip the paint off in order to resell it, or maybe uh, you just want to remove a portion of paint and primer from a miniature with a Q-tip, which you can do with airbrush primer, but you can't do it with a spray primer. And then finally, over time, you stay in this hobby long enough and spray cans can cost 10 to $20 a piece, whereas that's the same price for one bottle of the airbrush primer. And over time, the airbrush setup actually pays for itself in the number of spray cans you won't be buying because one bottle of airbrush primer will do the work of many many spray cans and you don't have to worry about the tips clogging up and all sorts of other stuff you know and then just once you have an airbrush you can do a lot more cool things uh, you know you can do xenophil highlighting blending light effects all sorts of stuff so you may as well get the tool if you love the hobby. Unfortunately here, I actually lost the footage of spray painting the black primer onto the models. I let these models cure for 48 hours before continuing the experiment. And I didn't do anything special to aid in the process like putting them under a warm lamp or anything like that. Uh, now remember, the Bloodletter Demons were washed with soap and water, and the Blood Reavers were washed with rubbing alcohol. So then I tested the adhesion. Now the white primer washed with soap and water, scratching it comes straight off, very little pressure. I'm barely running my fingernail over the coat of paint. Now, switching to the white primer on a model wash with rubbing alcohol, I'm using the same amount of pressure and the primer seems to adhere quite well. Actually checking in a few different places on the model with increasing pressure and the primer sticks just fine. So the rubbing alcohol initially seems to be making a difference. Moving on to the gray primer on the models, the model wash with soap and water, again, it, it sticks a slightly better than the white primer, but it's still coming off. There might be some truth to one color working better than the other in this case. However, when you switch to the, the model with gray primer washed with rubbing alcohol, it holds up extremely well to even really hard pressure scratches. Now onto the black primer. Again, soap and water is failing. The rubbing alcohol method with the black primer actually, again, is performing quite well. 
I'm scratching really, really, really hard here, and I actually do get a tiny spot to come off, but by and large, the primer stood up to some pretty heavy scratching. So there is a clear winner here. Washing with rubbing alcohol makes a significant difference in the adhesion of all Vallejo primers. Washing with soap and water had almost no effect on priming, left me with the same problems as if I hadn't even washed the miniatures at all. You could see all the places that I was scratching were large surfaces, areas on edges where the primer would probably be weakest, um, but also where you would have the most likelihood of the paint rubbing off because of your fingers or touching it or use, or maybe it's just uh, rub, you know, rubbing up against or scratching something else or another model. So in conclusion, you should always wash your miniatures with rubbing alcohol prior to priming them. You don't have to spend much time and effort on this. I spent about five seconds doing a quick scrub with an old toothbrush dipped in some rubbing alcohol and then rinsed it. That's it. It took all of 15 seconds to do all three of these blood reapers. Now your primer is gonna stick really well after that, regardless of the color or batch or whatever you use. It is worth noting that rubbing alcohol is also great for stripping paint off models and it does a lot for you. And if you're ever gonna strip paint off of a model to paint it new, you may as well just hit two steps at once and strip it with rubbing alcohol because if you use brake fluid or simple green, those approaches, you probably gonna to wanna to end up washing it again to make sure that all of those residues are off so your primer actually sticks. So that's it. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you liked it, maybe you wanna see some more experiments, then go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button and support the channel. I'll be putting up more hobby videos and painting videos in the future. Maybe you can recommend it to a friend who's experiencing similar issues. And you know, I'd really love to hear down in the comments below how any of you prepare your miniatures, if you do something very different, if you've experienced something different, or maybe you have solutions uh, that are completely different from what I've shown here. I'd love to hear about it and test them out. And you know, if you have any suggestions or videos that you wanna see, obviously let me know in the comments below. I'll definitely try them out. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching and good luck with your painting. Thank you.